RTTV is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. Big thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring RTTV and powering all of this goodness so that we can bring it to you every day. Uh, <laughs> hey, everyone, welcome to the Risty Podcast. I'm Gus. <laughs> I'm Gavin. <laughs> I'm Andrew. And I'm Chris. And I'm Gus. Uh, Andrew, really I, just saw your legally, I just saw your legally cleared background art sign. <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> it's, you know, I wanted to put something on the wall. It's like, you know what? I want to get, I want to have something that's, uh, that's not controversial for uh, any reason. And there yeah, we go. You, you, people, you give people a little taste of, uh, of your home life. They can get, get yeah. a peek behind the curtain and see what makes Andrew tick. <laughs> oh, it's that painting right there. Everything in Andrew's house is legal. <laughs> Except for the cocaine. <laughs> it is entirely not legal. Uh, oh, no, it's it's legal cocaine. I got the legal kind. Oh, Don't worry. The legal. Yeah, yeah. I got I, my uh, card. I was at... I, 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 I bought a beer yesterday that I think was very divisive amongst people. I was very excited. I went to the liquor store. Or I guess I bought it the other day on Saturday. I went to the liquor store, and mm -hmm. I saw that they had a beer I'd never seen before. And uh, it was a sour pickle beer. And oh, I, imme Ugh. I immediately texted uh, Eric Badur and Jordan Swears, and I told them, and they both, yeah, they both were disgusted. And uh, I, I couldn't believe that people wouldn't want to try this beer, so I posted an Instagram photo of it and asked people if they would want to drink the beer. And the overwhelming majority of people, I think, did not want to drink the beer. Oh, why are you surprised? It sounds like the least, <laughs> like, I, when, I, when I saw this beer in the store, I literally, inside of my mask, said, oh my god. <laughs> like I grabbed it uh, to, to buy it. Just, uh, just, just breathe, Gussie. Just breathe, Gussie. Just, just, you got this. Just relax. You got this. <laughs> you got this. Just take the beer up to the counter, pay for it, and get in the car and drive home as fast <laughs> as you can. <laughs> so, um, I actually the other day I drank it out of the can. I never poured it into a glass. So I brought a glass with me today to see if the beer is actually green, if it looks like pickle juice or not. Oh. oh. It is not green. Well, it's a no, little it's green. It's kind of yellow green. Yeah, it looks like piss. Yeah. But like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good, good when you put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. If you like pickle juice, it tastes just like pickle juice. Not, I would a, not try a sponsor, it, but I wouldn't buy it. Why does it's it funny. look like Gus that you're lit from like the waist down? I'm lit from the waist down. After that the beer, lights, you will be. The, what? the lights are <laughs> nice. Oh, the I, lights I, are I there. guess it's because you got the colors at the bottom. Yeah, and I got colored light. Back <laughs> it's funny. I'm drinking. Berry ginger alcoholic kombucha. <laughs> Good God. It's going wild. <laughs> Explain that to a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is English. Also, this is a, be uh, a fucking berry kombucha. Do you have the, the Night Raker up behind you? I do. I've got the Night Raker poster right back over here. Oh, nice. Okay. Boom. I got get me one dark. of them. Uh, yeah, I really, I really like it. It's really high, high quality, super like thick paper. Also, not an ad, but I, I just like it. I think it was a good drawing of me. That's that's how I uh, measure how good art is, is by how thick the format that it's put on <laughs> is. If it sticks out yeah, like, all, it's really good. <laughs> so, like, some a painting that's been painted on top of a painting is better than the original? Oh, so much better. <laughs> <laughs> it just sticks out more. Well, what I mean, about, look, at, like... look at that one of the of the woman who restored that famous painting. That one's way better than the original. <laughs> the, what about, like... I I don't think I've laughed harder <laughs> maybe in my life. The, okay, the, I, I can recall like about a handful of times where I like almost passed out from laughing. One was when I saw Jackass Two in the theater. That's the hardest I've ever laughed <laughs> in a movie ever, and it's not even close. Maybe second right underneath that was the first time I saw that piece of art, the fresco that the woman <laughs> decided to change, to fix, to take it upon herself to fix. I I was crying laughing for probably an hour. Like I don't it it's me. so funny. And I feel it's, like I'd never heard of the original anyway. I feel like that made it way more famous than it ever was. I would rather have the the new one. I'm, yeah, like you would make it a trip. You would go see the new one before you never yeah. would have heard yeah. of the original painting. It's just another pa random anonymous painting. Now it's famous for all the wrong reasons. Can we get a picture of it up again? I know we've all seen it a hundred times. It's just so good. I'm crying now thinking about it. 
<laughs> but, I mean, can you imagine the the, the the level of confidence you have to have <laughs> to see a painting that needs to be restored and be like, I've never painted in my life. I can do this. I, I, I think I can do this. She's like, how old is this? Uh, 900, 900 years? Oh, I got this. This is fine. I got some like shit in my handbag. Here we go. I just, I, I wonder, because you know, at some point during that painting, there was like, oh, this is not as going as well. As I, I just I'm not as good at painting as I assumed, but you know, the only way out is through. We're already, we're already too much into this. Just I stop have... now. I, Maybe I have... no one will notice. I have uh, a friend of mine who, uh, she had, it's an ex of hers now. She had a boyfriend who was like supremely confident about everything he did. And I remember once, like, I guess he decided, similarly, he decided he wanted to try painting. So he bought like a canvas and some paint and painted something and literally was like, I'm good at everything I do. This painting's amazing. And I saw it, I was like, no, I mean, really? I don't know where this confidence is coming from, but no. I mean, good on you for trying. It's a great first painting, but I wouldn't paint that and be like, oh. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I'm done. I'm I a very this. confident person too, but even I'm like, you gotta, you gotta understand when you, <laughs> if something's not your thing. Oh man, oh. that's oh, that's uh, on, uh, one of the one of like the best like just characters across like all media is just the the person with unearned confidence uh it's just it's a great it's a great personality trait for like instant comedy just add unearned confidence and you like it will uh, generate uh tons of tons of yucks uh your your zaff brannigans your neon joe werewolf hunters uh and the like it's just uh yeah it's a, it's a great personality trait for a complete buffoon <clears throat> Oh yeah, because everyone knows someone like that. You can easily be, you can easily relate to that. Where like, either you know you've had to work with someone like that. And you're like, oh my god, like, like it just evokes something in the pit of your stomach that makes you <laughs> like either want to laugh or cry. Um, Wait, what have I you see, done to your poster? It's yeah, backwards? I see some people in chat arguing, and I, I felt like. Oh, by the way, if you have an account on roosterteeth.com, uh, when we stream live on Mondays, uh, we we keep up with chat, and I got chat. Uh, on a window right over here. Argue uh, with us live. Yeah, you can argue with us live. People were arguing about why the Night Raker poster looks correct, but my Parasite poster is backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, why is that? Uh, someone sent me, uh, a community member sent me this Parasite poster. It's one that they used in the theater. And I guess it's one that normally is intended to be put into a light box and they illuminate it from the back. So as a result, they print both sides of it uh, to make the colors richer. Uh, but I didn't have a light box to mount it in, so I just mounted it backwards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you could always put a mirror next to it. I could also just mount it on the other side, because the other side has printed correctly. <laughs> it's kind of cool, though, just backwards. A, I, I could just get a light box. Because uh, the color's slightly different <clears throat> on the back side, I guess, to match up with the way it's supposed to look on the front. But I just thought it was cool. Yeah, th I felt bad, because the person who sent it to me sent it to the office, and I think it arrived to the office on March 25th, which is the day after we started working from home. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it sat in the office for months before finally uh, uh, I got cleared to be able to go in and pick up my mail. And uh, I picked it up a couple of weeks ago and I've just been waiting to, to mount it. So we we should have sold a poster of you in, in Bloodfest in the, in, the, in the car, like just a screenshot from that. Yeah. I would have that or up. Or like a, a a director's a director's cut of the movie poster, and I'm in the poster as well. <laughs> Chris, My you were listening. Ears. Oh, go yeah. ahead, Kevin. Well, you were just listening some stories to us before we started, and we were trying to tell you whether we'd heard them before or not. And I hadn't yeah. heard most of them, but there was one that was just mental, um, just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Well, I have like. Anytime I think of a story or something happens or I'm like, oh, I, never, I don't think I've told that on a podcast. I'll write it down. Yeah, but um, we just heard like the titles, like the headlines. Yeah. I don't know what <laughs> the headlines. <laughs> the one you were talking. Yeah. I'll read through a couple. Um, this week's no, no, Chris no, no, News. No, 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 wait. You can't just read through them because we have to hear them. Like, I don't want to okay. just hear the lead and then not hear the story. All right. Um, <laughs> electrified <laughs> car from fence. I didn't tell that one, huh? I don't know that I don't one. I think so. 
And then there was a leg hair bleach story. I think I told that one. I think we've heard that one. Um, yeah. And then, uh, wait, where did it go? Oh, <laughs> this one just says lettuce on my dick from Chipotle. <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm trying what to remember. What are you talking about? I it's think we even know. You're- you wrote down lettuce on my dick from Chipotle, and you don't remember what the story is. <laughs> I think it's. The, I think what it was. <laughs> I think what happened was, I was going to the bathroom. I peed, and then when I was like finished peeing, I looked on my dick, and I saw this weird green growth, and I freaked out. Like, what is that? And I started like, you just see something weird and green like on your penis that looks like it's like rotted off. And I, I was freaking out. And then I realized I was at Chipotle and had the <laughs> le- lettuce on my hand had gotten on my dick when I was peeing. And then I'd, it got stuck to my dick. And it was just lettuce. So that I think that's that story. <laughs> you know that universal experience of looking down and seeing something green on your dick, that 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 thing that we all have uh, come to know. It's so much so that it's kind of passe at this moment. We don't freak oh. out because it happens so often. I but just it looked like, like couldn't skin. remember it. You were like, oh, this could be this could be one of three things. I'm not quite sure. Well, there was a so it, looked, it looked, was like flowing from your shaft skin, so yeah. it looked like an like it extension. looked like skin. It looked like skin, like yeah. green, like a green growth or something. It's lettuce. Uh, and then, I mean, and I also was I was sure if it was. I told the story about the time I thought I had an STD. I think I told that one right. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. I can tell you it. A, did you did you shag a burrito, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be I told them I'm always open. I'll just say there was one time in college and I had uh me and this girl had fooled around. We didn't even we didn't we didn't even have sex. It was just other stuff. And a couple days later I like some red on my penis. Like I was like, oh no, like I think I think I got herpes. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I like messaged her, I was like, did you did you know? Like, why didn't you tell me? And oh I was like, freaking God, you out. get tested first. You just and went then, straight in. With well, the I was just like, I, I wasn't like trying. I wasn't. Be, I was just asking, like, hey, is there something, you know, like? And she's like, well, I didn't know. Blah blah blah. I was like, well, I'll go get it looked at, but I don't. I mean, from all my internet sleuthing. <laughs> and then, and then, so then I, I go to the like the student clinic, and and uh, I was like, yeah, I, I think I got herpes. And she's like, all right, well, let me see. And I pull down. My pants and she she's like where i'm like you know right there past the lettuce <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and then and then and then uh she was like oh that's not herpes and i was like well what is it and then she's like well what i don't know like what have you been doing i mean you're been doing anything with your penis recently i was like i mean i'm <laughs> masturbating like I, I was like well i masturbate I mean, she's like, well, how often? I was like, I don't know, like four times a day. I, I, it's summer, <laughs> you know, like it's summer going on. <laughs> and she's like, I think you just need to like masturbate less or use more lube or something. Like, I think you're just getting chafed. <laughs> Off. It's either herpes or I'm jerking it too much. <laughs> I'm gonna, this I'm gonna this is it. why you need a foreskin. You're gonna, you're gonna go <laughs> red roll with that one. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and write you a prescription for coolant. Okay. <laughs> but I need yeah. fucking relax, God. So you Calm just down. plowed yourself raw. I guess, I guess. And then that was a weird I mean it felt I was glad whenever I was able to message the girl, hey, false alarm, but then I felt dumb being like my bad. Like twice, because it or four times, I guess. Today. Um but yeah. Uh, so I thought maybe it's like something on my dick that could have been that story, but I think I t- how yeah. how how old were you? How old were you at that point? I don't know, nineteen. That tracks. I I yeah. feel like that's that four, that four in a day. That's quite high, I would say. Yeah. Well, I, it's not like every day, and also was, you know it was summer. <laughs> I like you coming it back summer. to this. It was summer defense. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I wouldn't say like for every day. I was just like you know. Couple days go by, nothing going on. 
You said well, you were averaging four a day. So if you didn't one day, you got to eight the next day. No, okay. Well, yeah. I'm saying like it was probably an average between two and four. Okay. <clears throat> I think <laughs> in that particular time period, I think it had been more than normal. Did you have like a schedule or anything? Like after lunch, you would no, always no, do it? No, nah. no, but you know, I think it was definitely a morning night thing. And then, you know, if you're just at home. Yeah, just morning, you know, afternoon, evening, night. Yeah. <laughs> after lunch. Brunch. Before nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the yeah. yard, walking the dog. You know, you know, you know how you uh, have a, a celebratory like post wank wank. You know, when you're like, oh man, that was really good. I, th I should I should celebrate I that should, with yeah. another. <laughs> well, I think also a lot of times you can do. It's like when you have stuff you have to do, you're like, I can't concentrate. I should jerk off so I can focus. Right. You get that. And post, then you, you get that post coital yeah. clarity. That like but clarity. Then you of get mind. sleepy, and then you fall asleep, and you wake up from a nap. And you're like, oh, gotta get back to work. Oh man, I just can't. You also focus. could have just gone yeah. to sleep. Right? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> then it's a vicious cycle because every time yeah. you, yeah. And then you got to waste a bunch of time going to the doctor. Yeah. It's always weird pulling your knob out in front of a stranger at the doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, at, at the I, doctor. At the doctor. <laughs> I should feel like I should specify it, that it was the doctor, but it's always like. Like I had to get my balls checked once, so I was like, "No need to show the entire thing. I'll just hold up, you know, the, yeah, the John Thomas. Just, let the uh -huh. balls hang." And she's like, "You have to let go of the entire thing because you can't see how they hang." <laughs> and then it just <laughs> became even worse because now it, I'd like built it up, <laughs> so yep. then I just let it go and it swung down, <laughs> like like obviously like this. Um, <laughs> I mean, you, you, but I, you I, I wish. <laughs> I, I I would hope that you would have gone at least like ta da or like sort of like <laughs> some pizzazz to it. But it's always like there's always this weird modesty that you have in front of a doctor yeah. still, even though there's you might what? as well just they're just treating it like flesh. <laughs> yeah. Well, also the, I think the, it the, the overbid horn from Price is Right <laughs> playing in the waiting room. You can hear it. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it! God. <laughs> but it's also like. You know, some people are showers, oh. some are growers, you know, and so you want to put your best foot forward, even if it's a, <laughs> even if it's a doctor, you know, man, no. so, why? I don't know. Oh, you mean, so, oh, you're talking about those doctor conferences where all they do is dish about all like the size <laughs> of the genitalia of all their patients. Well, they get it. <laughs> They, they, they go to international waters where the Hippocratic Oath means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they meet on fucking Richard Branson's yacht and they all just dish. They share pictures. Have you all had your, uh, your bollocks checked by a doctor or, or oh, knob? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Asshole. Hmm. Yep. Yep. I, I, my, my, yeah. My balls. I don't know about my butthole. <laughs> You gotta get a you gotta get a colonoscopy, Chris. You gotta get that GI GI tract checked. You don't, normally you don't need them until later unless they have a reason to do it. But uh, you start got you're at the age where you're gonna have to start getting your prostate checked within the next few years. Few, mm. it's gotta be, you gotta be like forty though, haven't you? Yeah, it's the next few years for him, isn't it? That's fair. No, no, no. Not you. Not get... <laughs> well, my my early thirties. It's gonna it's gonna sneak up on you before you know it, Chris. <clears throat> Although, although if you're if you're uh, whacking off like four times a day, that like <laughs> really you get the, you you start putting those numbers up again. You won't have to get it checked because like I think it was like if if you masturbate like every at least every day, like it reduces your chance of prostate cancer by like sixty percent or something like insane. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's healthy. Well, it's it's, it's for it's for the it's for your own good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We always taught at school to check your bollocks for lumps. Never. Uh, we were. T I think it's one of the things that's like been told, but not like enforced. Enforced? Oh, what do you What do you think they did at school, Chris? Did you think they said gave you homework and made you tell them? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I feel like it's like, yeah, you want to check for lumps, but it was never something that like it's time. Like, go do it. Just like a <laughs> suggestion. When I was in college, they would hang little placards on the uh, shower heads in the bathrooms uh, with like a little graphic showing you how to inspect your own testicles for testicular oh, cancer. Oh, that's smart. That's a good time to do it. <clears throat> then the on the flip side was uh, for the women how to inspect themselves for breast cancer. 
Hmm. That's the whole story. I don't know. That's That's it. A... <laughs> uh, this episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Stamps.com. Uh, if you're looking to start your own business or online store, packaging shipping can be a big hassle for one person to do. There's tons of boxes, packing tapes everywhere, and being a small business owner can be tough. That's why thousands have discovered the benefits of Stamps.com here in recent months. They've been able to keep their businesses running and avoid crowds at the post office all from their own computers. Uh, with Stamps.com, you can print postage on demand, avoid going to the post office, and you'll save money with discounted rates you can't even get at the post office. Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to 62% and no residential surcharges. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right to your computer in the comfort of your home or office, whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home and you need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Uh, simply use your computer to print official US postage 24 seven for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. And once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier. You can schedule a pickup or drop it in a mailbox. It's just that simple. Uh, and like I said, with stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off of every stamp and up to 62% off USPS and UPS shipping rates. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. Uh, right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in rooster. That's stamps.com and type in rooster. Stop. Uh, so you you were talking about the uh, <clears throat> the Price is Right horns, Andrew. Yeah. And it reminds you, one of my longtime favorite websites on the internet is sadtrombone.com, which is just like a website you go to and there's just a big button that says play and you hit it and you just hear the wah, 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 <laughs> like a <laughs> trombone. <laughs> It's, it's like it's so simple it's like it's been around forever i just love using it all the time it's like whenever i need to send someone like a sad trombone that's the perfect website to send someone it's, it's super a, simple do you guys remember where uh you're the man now dog mm -hmm. yeah like i is that still a thing it's just a it was just a site that said you're the man now dog yeah right? I mean, you, and then would make other ones it would be like early memes wouldn't it yeah yeah <clears throat> and they uh they shut down, but then they're back now, right? Like they shut down like last year or two years ago. And I think they lost a lot of their old archive, but I think they relaunched and they're back as something different now. Hmm. Yeah, that was some weird stuff on there. Yeah. I remember there was like one that, because it was pretty much just a screenshot with some music looping. There was right. one yeah. that was just like, uh, it was like the Guinness Book of Guinness World Records website. And it was like, highest fatalities in a terrorist attack and it was like a picture of 9 11 and then below it it says do you think you can beat this and they had the, the <laughs> website for like submitting an application because i guess they just had that on all their records but didn't didn't remove it from that oh one. my and god it was just that with some, <laughs> some music oh. looping. <laughs> like challenging people yeah yeah wow and i think the music they played over it was um tarzan boy <laughs> just on a loop <laughs> Good oh. God! I remember just what, looking at Loop. I was just like, "What? <laughs> what is going on? Who made this?" Unbelievable. A, that was like early two thousands, probably. Yeah, I, oh, I remember man. for a while Jeff and I wanted to make a, a competitor <clears throat> website. We we used to like making tons of websites. We wanted to make a competitor website uh, for you, the man now dog, uh, called What's in the Box dot com. Because uh, mm. we we because you're the man now dog was like that quote from that movie with uh who was in it sean connery, well, sean connery and, and a kid and he's finding like, forrester baby finding, <laughs> finding forrester uh but you're, you're the, the man you're, now dog you're all the man now uh, what's in the now? box of course from the end of seven we, we thought it was another equally quotable line probably more quotable <clears throat> oh i don't I, know oh wait wait way more quotable like you're the man now like i i feel like that that like it got kind of like the it was just it got uh ironic attention because it's so like kind of weirdly who cares in that movie but like elevating it ele elevating it to this like weird cult status uh it, it, it did make it, me watch that movie it was in the trailer <laughs> right was it what's the yeah. movie about about yeah, that's only because like, I've never seen that movie, but I know that that's from Finding Forrester, and I th I've only ever seen the trailer, so it must have been from there. It's like a Sean Connery is a famous writer who only wrote like one book, but then there's a kid who figures out where that it's he's the writer and then trains under him. Trains. And what, and what what prompts him to say trains. you're the man now, dog? I think he was writing really good. <laughs> he was writing. Yeah, he was on a roll. I think that's it. No, he I was writing very well. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs>
I, welcome to the uh, Finding Forrester cast, the only podcast to discuss <laughs> Finding Forrester in 20 years. I'm going to, I'll read you the, the story, the plot summary here from IMDb. Because of scoring exceptionally high on a statewide standardization, a standardized exam and being an exceptionally good basketball player, Jamal Wallace is sent to a prestigious prep school in Manhattan. He soon befriends the reclusive writer, William Forrester. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, so weird I, I feel like if they re-released the movie and just called it you're the man now dog it, more people would see it <laughs> probably I would they, they could, it could be like uh, on the on the box art <laughs> finding forrester uh then under it like the creators of you're the man now dog <laughs> <laughs> yeah or it would be like that what was that tom cruise movie where they just made Di the slogan die oh, rinse repeat. Die, repeat yeah rinse yeah. die, die repeat yeah <laughs> rinse die repeat or live die repeat that was it yeah what was what was what was the original title of that movie it was uh it was edge tomorrow. of tomorrow or something edge of tomorrow. Yeah. yeah but they should i just want to call it the day after tomorrow which is a totally different movie <laughs> is that the one where the atmosphere falls down <laughs> and everything freezes yeah that's right that's that that's the movie where cold <clears throat> moves linearly like cold freezing cold <laughs> chases people around corners it's yeah bananas the stratosphere is just like freezing stuff in a torrent yeah exactly yeah, that, that that wasn't good was it no no no, no. but it's uh just like one of, the, one of those dumb movies you go to and just like eat popcorn and laugh at disaster movies i feel like there hasn't been a good one or there hasn't been one in a while like just a natural 2012 was probably yeah right yeah i think 2012 the, was the last one i watched there was uh, that uh earthquake one with the rock where he was in oh, the skyscraper San Andreas? Oh no, San Andreas is the one thing. Oh, you're right. Yeah, San Andreas. I never saw that. I did see Skyscraper and I didn't think it was that good. Nah, I mean, it, it, here's it, it, I feel like it had all the makings to be good. Like it had all the ingredients, but like it they I don't know, uh, uh baked it outside. It just like sucked. It just like had everything that could have been good, but it was really really yeah. underwhelming. I think it just it took itself really seriously and I was not so, and I was not expecting that because I feel like The Rock does a lot of tongue-in-cheek shit that you cheer at whenever he's on the screen and in that there was just nothing there was no funny no they played it they played it so straight that was that was yeah. it that's it they played it so straight there was nothing kind of winky and fun about it um that it was yeah they, they played it completely like oh this is a serious action adventure movie that takes place in a skyscraper it's just like it just the, taking the best parts of die hard and just kind of recycling them, but in a non like fun, campy way. Yeah, boo, mm, boo, yeah. Ernst. There was also, sorry, speaking of disaster movies, there was one I feel like that came out um, like two or three years ago. By the way, this could have been like November of last year. Um, <laughs> that was, I, who the fuck knows anymore? But it was like, we. it, it came out to no fanfare. <clears throat> it was that like satellites could control the weather Oh, and then oh, someone oh. turns the satellites against us. Yeah. And I think it's got like Gerard Butler in it or something. Yes. And like Geostorm. Geostorm. Yes. I don't think I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah, it came, out, uh, it, came, it came out last summer, I think. Oh, uh, I watched that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Geostorm, um, yes. Uh the like a, a move it's like hey think of a title for this movie you have five seconds starting two seconds ago oh uh, 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 geostorm there got it done <laughs> october 2017 that was so long it was almost three years ago i feel like that movie <laughs> just came out <laughs> well it feels for like it just came out to me because this is the first time i've heard it <laughs> for the record it has a, a 21 on metacritic before the rock ends his uh, acting career i want there to be a movie where he has to like hold both sides of the earth together somehow just like in the, in the <laughs> middle like the earth just split down the core and he's got to go down there he's got to go and, down no, a ladder and hold it and and he's got like his buddy like his sidekick is with him and he's like trying to help and he looks at camera <laughs> and says i guess you could say i'm between a rock and a hard place uh <laughs> <laughs> See, fucking just, the, line, the movie just writes itself, it, honestly. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then Sean Connery jumps the gap between the two halves of the planet, yelling, "You're the man now, dog." <laughs> but he does a roll. How hard is this, guys? How hard is it to write a fucking incredible blockbuster, <laughs> multi-billion-dollar movie? That 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 would make that would make thirty million dollars 
uh, opening day. What would that movie uh, be called? Um, Hard Rock. Journey to the Center of the Rock. <laughs> yeah, that works. No, they just uh, they just call it The Rock again, completely erasing <laughs> the other movie that Sean Connery was in called The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> that Sean Connery gets to be in two, The Rock. That's right. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Guys, so, someone in chat's asking about our, the Beaky Claw shirts. Oh, yeah, baby. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, it's a new new merchandise coming out later this week from Rooster Teeth. You can see we all... Oh, we, Chris and I were wearing the same one earlier. We I had to change. We all clearly didn't get the memo. Yeah, look at the, they man, merch cooking knocked it out of the damn park with these things. This is some yeah. like awesome design stuff. That, I think the one the one Andrew's wearing is my favorite. Except yeah. I, I wore that one yesterday, I think, so I couldn't wear it today. Yeah. Well, this one's softer. I like that because <laughs> this is a hoodie type thing, and it but it's also oh, yeah, not a... it's not heavy. It's not so heavy that it's like you can't wear it, and you know. Yeah. No. 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 I I I I felt all felt all the all the goods. That's really nice. Uh. Yeah, just I love. I'm like really in love with this kind of like southwestern, like, uh, kind of like motor lodge, like mid century mm, motor mm -hmm. lodge aesthetic. Kind of like uh, reminds me of like a, a hotel that would be in Marfa or something. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I, they they really they really crushed it. I, I think they did a great job. Crushed a... it. Yeah, and it's out on you Thursday. Talk... No, it comes out this Thursday. This episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Felix Gray. Uh, I constantly have my face in a screen from morning to night, and there's no cutting back. I've got my phone, TV in front of a monitor, you know, whether working, gaming, uh, watching TV, you name it. But with every screen comes another source that emits blue light. Well, what's blue light? It's the light that's emitted by digital screens at a certain point in the spectrum. It's about 455 nanometers. Uh, write that down. It's going to be on the test. I'm going to ask you later. Uh, if you're like me and you endure excessive amounts of screen time from your favorite devices, you may have eye strain, headaches, or tired eyes. Blue light at night can even lower the production of melatonin, which is a hormone that regulates your sleep. And the solution to this is Felix Gray. Uh, Felix Gray blue light filtering glasses filters out 90% of blue light in most damaging range and eliminates 99% of glare through a proprietary industry-leading lens technology only available with Felix Gray. And the frames are hand-finished from durable, super lightweight Italian acetate. Ordering online is super easy. The glasses ship directly to you with a hard case and lens cloth included. You can try them for 30 days risk-free. If your screens aren't easy around the eyes, you send them back for a full refund. Uh, go to felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash rooster. Shipping and returns are totally free at Felix Gray, felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster. You talked about a, uh, like a motor lodge, uh, old motel motif. It reminds me of a book I read uh, a couple of years ago. And I talked about it in the podcast. So I'll only kind of briefly go over it here because I don't think I ever told Andrew about it. But it's a really long story. The gist of it, it's, it's supposedly true. This uh, writer, I want to say for The New Yorker, got contacted by someone who used to own a motel in Colorado. And the, the guy who owned the motel apparently was spying on his guests through fake vents in the ceiling for like 30 years and journaled all kinds of creepy things mm -hmm. about people who would stay at his motel. And um, uh, it's just this really horrifying look at, like it, like it will forever make you paranoid about staying at hotels ever again, because this guy had made very elaborate ways to look into every room at his motel. He would crawl around in the attic spying on everybody. And he Man. kept like mountains of journals about everything that he would observe, like what so people would do in private when they thought nobody was watching them. He would just write it, he wouldn't film it? Uh, no, he would just write write things down. And, then he and how did he how did he get caught? He never got caught. He uh, he contacted this writer because he sold the motel. Like time had moved on, and he wanted to tell his story and release. His, he thought of it as re what he was doing as research. He thought he had all this valuable information. He wanted the information to get out. So he contacted a writer. God, I want to say the writer was for the New Yorker. Uh, it was a publication like that. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, so he contacted this writer that he was a fan of and asked him to uh, tell his story, and that's how it finally came out. I feel like people do the <laughs> gnarliest shit in hotels. Did he get a arrested or something? Uh, no, by the time that like the, the stories were all released, it was like decades mm. after it had all happened. There was no, mm. like it would have exceeded statute of limitations. And then also even, it's like that whole unreliable narrator thing. Like he writes some things that you're like, I don't know if that's true. Like the whole book you read it and you're like, 
I know this guy's presenting it like it's real, but this doesn't sound like it's possible. Like there's no way yeah. to in independently verify the things that are told. So you have to kind of like take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. I had a situation kind of like that recently. What? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> go on. Yeah. Well, that sounds worse than it actually is. I, well, this is, video hasn't come out yet, so I'm going to be kind of ambiguous as to <clears> what <throat> I'm talking about. But I was building a fake wall. Uh, and I go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and I was like, so I'm trying to build a fake wall in my apartment <laughs> and they go I oh, hide <laughs> and they go oh you you want the trump package it's right over here <laughs> like that i can hide behind and peek out of but that looks like a normal wall what does that and mean the, and the eyes of uh, I, and i was like the eyes were like what are you trying and i'm like well i'm not like doing anything weird with it like it's for my I'm wor it's it's for my job like and i was just like uh, how do i get out of this <laughs> And I was like, well, uh, and they're like, just apply wood. I would suggest apply. Wood. Okay, thanks. Bye. And I ran. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm not doing anything weird behind my fake wall t shirt is generating a lot of suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out it was fine. It's not, I have it right now. Well, you can't see it because it's, it blends in. Um, Why did uh, I feel like. If it's for a video, I should just wait for the video, right? Yeah, it'll come out, I think, this week. I think it'll come out on Friday it's for a hard mode. <clears throat> so, oh, okay. Ooh. Man, I... Uh... But... Go ahead, Chris. I don't want to stop your story. Oh, no. Thank... I don't know, but I felt judged is what I was going to say. Well, I think <laughs> I rightfully mean, that's, so. That's rightfully... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were right to judge you in that case. Um, man, this morning... Chris, you post on Instagram. You posted some like behind the scenes photos uh, for um, uh, hardcore, hardcore mini golf, and I, I I don't know what was wrong with me, but I tried to leave kind of a jokey comment on your <clears throat> image, uh -huh. uh, on your images, and I fucked up like four times in a row. Like I typed it, then I was like, wait, I typed it wrong, and I deleted it, and I retyped it again. It was like, no, that's still not right. I deleted. I did it four times, and after the fourth time of deleting it, I was like, I just give up. Like this comment was not. <laughs> was not meant to exist. I was going to say so because like on the first image, you can kind of see Eric Badur in the back on the right side of the image. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I was trying to write like cool photo bomb by Bernie in that first image. Uh. But I just like, <laughs> it wasn't even complicated. Like it was a super <laughs> simple, dumb joke. And I just couldn't get it. I just kept deleting it. And I was like, all right, fine. Fuck it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's not worth it. As I had like a bunch of notifications and I it didn't go through, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh did oh. you got notifications for them? So you actually made the comment and then deleted it instead yeah, of just four times. <laughs> you must have been like, man, Gus really likes this picture, but I can't see what he said. <laughs> I, just, I, was, I was so upset at myself. <laughs> it was, like I said, it wasn't even a complicated joke. It was one sentence. I couldn't type a fucking sentence. Look, we're just, all falling apart, <laughs> man. Just skip your phone across a lake. It's just like a stone. <laughs> <laughs> He's I can imagine you just getting all frustrated. And, were, were you in bed or something? Uh, no, I was. Uh, I was at my table. I was. Uh, I was eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> and I was trying to type. While I was eating like a bowl of fucking Cheerios. I just couldn't type a goddamn sentence. I'm. I'm impressed. You get up and eat breakfast. Um. Yeah. Why not? I'm, I'm normally not a breakfast person, but I've been trying to be a little better about it because what had started happening, especially now that you know, we're working from home was I was starting to eat lunch earlier and earlier every day. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't be eating lunch at 10 in the morning. This doesn't make it like, I'm just, I'm just making a sandwich for breakfast is all that's happening now. Was that just because you wanted something to do? Well, no, I was like, I was getting hungry. So I was like, uh -oh. well, my food's right there. I'll just make lunch. I'll make a sandwich. It was like, you can't eat a, you can't eat a fucking sandwich at 10 AM. So I started eating, eating cereal just to not eat lunch Depends so what early. It is. You can have a sausage sandwich. Bit of bacon, bit of HP sauce. Uh, well, that's what I used to uh, Go and order a breakfast. six foot uh, breakfast party sub. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat one of the chow and one of those <laughs> for a while. Oh, I, oh, I, I got influenced yesterday. I saw uh, there's like a over by the office, there's a, a vegan deli, and I followed them on Instagram. And they posted a photo mm -hmm. of a breakfast sandwich that looked amazing. It looked so good that. That Instagram post made me go order that sandwich and pick it up and bring it home to eat it. 
social media works. It, it absolutely worked. I was like, wow, that sandwich looks amazing. I wish I could eat that sandwich. Wait a minute, I can. <laughs> I can make this a reality. Are you I could, the kind I of person, could... when you're talking about a place and you point to it, are you are you accurate? Like, was it in that direction or did you just point? Yeah, it's to actually, I, I did point in the direction. It is right over there. <laughs> I mean, not right over there, but in that, like... if you kept going far oh, enough, yeah. it would be in that direction. <laughs> Which way is Mexico? Hmm. From, is there a downside to me orienting where <laughs> no, uh, I don't know <laughs> my room Maybe. is? I, mean, I know where it is. I don't want to point at it. It'd be like someone's in Me Mexico. Is like, all right, we know where to go. What direction? <laughs> I I was just I just don't know which countries I'm facing. Just think about northeast, southwest, and what figure Wait. out where one of them <laughs> is. <laughs> where did I see it? Sorry, that reminds me. That reminds me. There was a. Okay, so do, do you remember this thing where like Shia LaBeouf put a camera in a field pointing at a flag? Oh, this is familiar. And no. okay, so this was like this crazy. This is like the uh, the peak of internet sleuthing. So uh, there was a like uh, Shia LaBeouf as like this art project put a like put a camera pointed a webcam at a flag, and I can't remember what the flag was. I don't know if it was the American, I can't remember if it was American flag or just like a white flag or something like that, but he just pointed a camera at a flag that was like facing the sky. Nothing to script in the shot at all except the flag. And uh, it was streaming live to the web. And at one point in the video, like a plane, you can see a plane fly by. The sleuths on the internet used the time of day, the position of the sun, the weather and the plane route to pinpoint where that camera was. Wow. It is, there's, there, there's a, oh yeah, it's a, I think somebody had, yeah, the, yeah, it was something about like the people on 4chan like actually like, figured out where the like camera was with nothing but like a, a blue patch of sky with a plane going across it. That's wow. Nuts. I feel like yeah. we should do a black box down episode about that. Uh, years Wait, insane actually, stuff. I, I similarly, a... years ago, I remember there was another thing where uh, someone had uploaded a video. I want to say it was like an employee at a fast food restaurant. I think it was an employee at a Domino's had uploaded a photo of themselves like handling food in a non-hygienic manner. I don't remember exactly what they were doing. Uh, but again, it was like they uploaded it on 4chan and people on 4chan based on what other fast food restaurants were visible outside the front door of this Domino's. They figured out what Domino's it was and exactly which location. And they contacted the manager of that location to report the employees who were doing things that they shouldn't have been. It's like, and it wasn't like strange businesses that you could see. It's like, they could see that there was a McDonald's and like a KFC next to it. It's like, okay, where in the United States is there a Domino's, a McDonald's and a KFC all within that close of a range. And it's like, just narrowed it down through some- I mean, people wow. are, there are people who are very good at just geography in general, like the people who are really good at GeoGuessr, where it just plops you down in street view, just in some random road somewhere in the world. And people are like, well, the sun's north, so we're in the southern hemisphere, which means blah, blah, blah. And they just figure out, I don't know, that's probably not right, is it? <laughs> I mean, uh, so you're sounding good, though. <laughs> yeah, but then they figure out, like, oh, the, the text there and like you're driving on this side of the road, we're definitely in Turkey, blah, blah, blah. And it's like crazy how good people are at just identifying other countries by the way we, they look. i played that game with mm -hmm. uh uh on a live stream with uh like jordan swears and uh i can't remember who all isa just some animation uh crew and we ended up identifying mm -hmm. where we were based off a building that was in a jackie chan movie <laughs> where it's like oh remember that looks like that building that jackie chan jumped off of and slid down in that one movie was it like then, Rotterdam or something? Yeah, or something. Yeah, and then we we're like, "Wait, that is that building." And then they were like, "Wait, this I, now we know where we are," because there's a recognizable building that we as, of a movie we'd seen. Yeah, that's crazy. This episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Hims. Uh, you know what's not my idea of a good time? Going to the doctor for a problem I don't want to talk about, especially if it turns into multiple office visits, having to go back, huge pain in the butt. Uh, I've got a question, guys. 40% of us by age 40 struggle to get and maintain an erection. So why do so many of us turn to weird solutions or nothing at all when we can get tested medicine and science? The solution, 
4hims.com, the one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Uh, it's super easy. You just go to the website, uh, consult with a physician who determines the correct course of action for you, and uh, you get it shipped straight to your house. Couldn't be easier. Uh, thanks to science, ED can now be optional. Hims connects you with real licensed doctors and FDA-approved pharmaceutical products to treat ED. Well-known generic equivalents to name-brand prescriptions to help you combat ED. Prescription solutions are backed by science and made more affordable. All you need to do is answer questions about your medical history and chat with a doctor for a confidential review. If approved uh, by the doctor, products are shipped directly to your door. Uh, being your best means performing your best. It's erectile without the dysfunction. There's no need to worry about multiple in-office doctor visits, and there's no painful injections like other treatments. Try HIMSS today uh, by starting out with a free online visit. Go to 4 rooster5. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash rooster and the number five. Uh, 4 com slash rooster5. Prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require consultation online with a medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. You can see the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to a doctor, office, or pharmacy. Remember, that's 4 com slash rooster5. Oh, man. Um, try, uh, I, you need to make an account. I don't want to make an account. I was going to try to do it right now while we play, but I don't want to sign up. Uh, when you mentioned Black Box <laughs> Down, I have a, a comment that someone told me recently I thought was funny, Gus. Yeah. Uh, someone said, I listened to your podcast. I like it. It wasn't what I was expecting, which I was like, I interpret it as like both a, an insult and an a compliment. It's like, <laughs> I liked it. I wasn't expecting to. Well, at least they tried it. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't what <laughs> I was expecting. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I was prepared to like put this on and then throw up because I hated <laughs> it so much. But you know what? Well, it wasn't what I was expecting. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's like something you say, like when you get a weird dish put in front of you at a restaurant and you try it and you're like, oh, that's not what I expected. I actually liked it. It's like, it's not yeah, what you yeah. say, like you went out and downloaded something and decided like, we're like, I'm going to invest 30 minutes into this to see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> or to someone that you know personally, you're like, oh, hey, listen to my podcast. And they're like, oh, I actually liked it. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you're, you're okay at something. Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, we taped two episodes of Black Box Down last week, which is unusual for us. Normally we tape one a week, but we want to build up a little more of a queue. So we taped yeah. two, not, we taped two on two consecutive days last week. And that felt a little strange, uh, doing two back to back. I don't know how you felt about it, Chris. It was like, I felt weird having everything prepared ahead of time. Like the first one we did, I had, uh, you know, we had finished work on the script obviously earlier, and then the second one we finished later. So it was weird to like be revisiting the older one because I felt like we should have already taped it by then. It was less weird for me because <clears throat> I didn't have to look at the script. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I guess. Well, you, true. you did have that episode where you had like three different events. So did it yeah. feel more like that? No, because that was just all still in one episode you know we just knocked it all out in one in one recording it wasn't that recording session wasn't especially long it was like a normal recording length this was like we did a whole thing and then the next day we did it again it didn't, it didn't feel like there was no time to to reset set that one aside and then like start the research on the next one um i have a question i have a question for you regarding black box down uh i do not know have you guys done an episode on, I can't remember what the name of the flight was, but there was an Errol Morris first person documentary on it. Um, it was, so it was about a plane, a plane crash where the, a basically a one in a like five trillion chance that three safety redundancies failed. Like it was a astronomical Co like coincidence that these three systems on this plane would fail. There, there were three fail safes. They all, uh, they all buckled. The person who designed that system was on that flight by chance. Like took was like at a gate, decided like not to get on and like take a later flight. Just was like ah, I'll just I'll take a little bit later flight. I want to like relax. I don't want to be rushed to like my plane. Decides to get on this later flight. The person who designed that system was actually on the flight. And like took over for the pilot and like managed to crash land the plane. Um, was in like a body cast for like a year. Like some people survived, some people died, but 
it, it's but it's an Errol Morris first person documentary. So this guy, this 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 man who invented this plane system is like looking at the camera like he's talking to you the entire time. One of the craziest things I've ever heard. It's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard in my entire life. That doesn't life. sound real. That's crazy. It's insane. Uh Errol Moore, Errol Morris first person. Uh I cannot <clears throat> for the life of me remember what that episode is. Uh, I feel like titled. it's always we weird that when people get involved in their own shit by complete fluke. Like I think right before, like the the, uh, the guy that invented the Heimlich maneuver was able to use it on someone at some point, just like completely randomly. Did, didn't he have and, it uh, used on him as well? Or, or it was used on him, maybe, yeah. or something like that. And then, then You're like, doing this... it wrong! <laughs> <laughs> and then like at some point, the CEO of Segway like rode a Segway off a cliff and died or something. It's like, man, oh, you're so he... attached to the thing you're involved with. Yeah, he was like a like a senior VP uh, yeah. of Segway who like f rode off the cliff. Uh, I think I know which incident you're talking about, Andrew. And uh, hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's the episode for Black Box Down that's coming out this week. Oh no! <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> oh my what god! Are the what are the <laughs> no. It, well, I was gonna say I was like. Man, that, there's there's an episode we just recorded that was <laughs> that had a really similar kind of experience. Yeah, it, it, he, it, the guy didn't uh, he didn't invent the system, but he I, I don't want to get into it right now. But he was very knowledgeable about the system. He had like some very direct firsthand <laughs> experience. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a great episode. So <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot. I cannot stop. I cannot wait to listen to it because yeah, it is one of the most amazing stories. And this, yeah, the whole the whole thing is just super strange coincidence. Like so many things lined up uh, oddly in that flight, and it was like something's good, something's bad. But yeah, it's super interesting. Oh, yeah, according that's... to chat, uh, the Heimlich guy used it on someone in his retirement home at age ninety or at like ninety. Do you think he got excited? He's like, I finally get to do it. <laughs> I bet the guy who was choking was worried, and, and and then he ran up. He's like, don't worry, I'm the Heimlich guy, I got this. And he just popped it right out. He's like, you're in, you're even, in the best not even hands. The Heim, not even the Heimlich guy, I'm Mr. Heimlich. <laughs> <laughs> the name's like, Steve was Heimlich. Was he Heimlich? I guess it makes I sense. That's his name, isn't it? Oh, uh, was it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh man, chat chat's blown me up. I'm so sorry. I had no, I had no fucking idea. I'm so sorry that I uh, <laughs> no, no, no. spilled the beans on that episode. I was just like, oh man, that'd be so cool if you guys. Uh... Well, there, there it is. Oh, I think, I think it's a good thing. Okay, you, want good. To hear, you got, you got to hear all the, all the yeah. details. If I want, if I wanted to hide it, I wouldn't have admitted it. I would have said, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll look into it. <laughs> That's you true. That's, be true. Like, That's not real. <laughs> so, I mean, if anything, absolutely check out that episode because it is a crazy, crazy story. It's one of it's the most. It's a banger. It's a banger. It's this, it's this, it's this Thursday. Uh, yeah, the guy's name was Henry Heimlich. <laughs> huh. He had to have whispered that into the person's ear, like, "I'm Henry Heimlich." <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me Henry show you my. Let me show you my maneuver. <laughs> Seems like you're in need of my maneuver. <laughs> I invented something for just this situation. <laughs> I have an invention for this. <laughs> oh. Man. I... <laughs> it, uh... What would it... this what would the Sorola maneuver be? asks Eric in the chat. It'd be avoiding so... someone you know in a public place. <laughs> oh yeah. It would be like altering the way that you're going through a store <laughs> so you don't keep running into someone you know. <laughs> yeah. It's it's abandoning your shopping cart and then leaving the store without <laughs> buying anything just to avoid yeah. seeing the person again. It's hiding behind your wife as you back towards the door. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping a smoke bomb at just the right moment. Oh man, I don't know what the fuck is going on here lately. Have you all noticed mm -hmm. that for like I, I for the past it's, I think it's rained every day the last three days, despite the fact every day it says there's a 0% chance of rain. Am I right? It rained today, it rained yesterday, and it the rained... The weather's never right here. Yeah, it's so wrong. Like, every day it's... it says 0%, or at most, it'll say 10% chance of rain. And it just, it's raining right now, I think, or just rained a little while ago. Like, the past three days, every day it has rained. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's the fundamental thing you want to know. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be hot as fuck. You don't check the weather for that. You check the weather to know if it's going to rain. 
That's all I want to know. And it's been way off the last three days. Like, why is it <laughs> so to wrong? Fair, to be fair, what other thing involving predicting the future do you get annoyed about? It hasn't happened yet. I yeah, think it's but, amazing that we could get weather. But we don't get it. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting it. <laughs> yeah, I had that time well, where D Dan has flown in and we were like, oh, we're like, yeah, we're going to do some do some nice slow-mo for the next week or so. And, it, and the app just says like storm every single day. So we're just like, man, should we even bother like prep? And then it's just like 10 back-to-back -back days of not a cloud <laughs> in the sky. And it's 105 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. And we're just like, what is this app? Who's, who's entering the data? Where's this coming from? <laughs> just like, well, you got to understand, fellas, you know, weather's not exactly a science. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a science. Come on. Give me something. You know, I, it's uh, where the weather, the, this like rain every day thing, it's it's very much like um, uh, it happens like the same time every day. I feel like it's like between like three and five to six. It's just that like kind of monsoon, like monsoon summer weather where you just get like a cloud burst in like after the heat of the day is like, you know, throwing all this moisture into the upper atmosphere. Um, and then, yeah, we'll rain for like 30 minutes, like really hard late in the afternoon. And then disappear and then it uh it's just in, human, in mo i feel like in most places it's good like living in england it was totally functional i would trust that app it'd be mm. accurate that's because it rains every day in england <laughs> all right all right chill out chris <laughs> all right sometimes the sun comes out all right. <laughs> it's got i once bought some fancy shoes to go with like some fancy trap. It was a suit. I don't know why I was going about to list all the fancy things attached to it. It was a suit. <laughs> I was buying shoes and they were like, these are not waterproof. Do not wear these in the rain. I was like, well, what's the point of them? I'm never going to be to wear this damn suit now. I'm going to wear it with like Converse. It's always like, it's always wet. And they did get ruined. Well, it's, it's like they knew what they were talking about. Yeah. I just like, what, I what shoes aren't waterproof? I like I, I get the idea of like you can get oh you might get a wet sock if you wear these shoes but not to the point where the shoe like peels apart and fails because it got wet that's the point yeah, of the a, shoe it's a design it's like, flaw yeah, yeah it's like all right here all right now I, I see you got your eye on this uh, scuba tank now that's one of the top of the line <laughs> scuba tanks but I warn you do not get it wet that thing will explode <laughs> if water even comes anywhere near that sucker I mean even a, I mean even the high humidity will send that thing into the stratosphere so watch oh. it. Oh dear! Ridiculous. Yeah, that, that does seem stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm mad on your behalf, Gavin. I don't like that shoe. Yeah, and also shoes that break apart when they get wet are really expensive shoes. They were like over a hundred quid for those damn Ugh. shoes. I'm really annoyed about these shoes. I I, I feel for you. I, I I am also angry at an expensive <laughs> inferior product. But like you do get you that. Like as you approach like luxury levels of things the functionality goes way down and you've got to be really careful with them. And it's like, who, who are these people spending more money on shittier stuff? I don't understand it. And I feel that, like that happens a lot in technology as well. Like all the fancy stuff is like, oh, you'd be very careful with it. Well, that's, I think that's, it's the status thing. It's like, I can spend, it's like, I have so much money. I can just spend it on this disposable shit. Cause guess what? If it, my shoes, my ruddy shoes that cost a hundred quid fall apart, doesn't matter. Buy a new pair. I don't care. I, the have, shit. I have the I money. I have a pair of them because yeah. every time it rains, I just toss them <clears throat> into the bin. <laughs> I've got, so, I've got so, so much fucking money. Let, let me, let me tell you something that'll infuriate you then. Uh, I remember I read this. I had to look it up. So, uh, is everyone familiar with that uh, luxury car, the Bugattis? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Super expensive vehicle. An oil change on a Bugatti costs between twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars. Do they have to? An oil change for Why? a car costs as to, much like, as another delve, car. <laughs> delve delve between the atoms of the oil tank to get to the oil. What do they need? What do they need? Are they using diamond tools to get it out? What's happening? Diamond they, oil. It costs cost twenty thousand dollars, but they still print it out on that dot matrix, like seventy year old eh, paper. Like you still get one of those old ass Jiffy Lube receipts. Yeah, it, it's a oh, it man, uses a, a dry sump oiling system with sixteen different drain plugs, accessible after removing parts of the underbody. 
it looks like you have to remove the car's rear fender liners and rear deck. So you have to take part of the car apart in order to change the oil. Do they just not want a little plug on the bottom? No, they have 16 plugs, Gavin. Well, do they not? <laughs> well, don't you understand? 16 is better than one. <laughs> it's like those fancy bogs that people get. Uh, where it's like it like washes your arsehole and stuff, but it's like a lot of them they have like a they have a powerful pump that needs to be plugged in. So if you have a power cut, you're like you're left with like an issue where you can't flush it, and you've got to like crack open and do like a secret manual flush. It's like that's just way more effort. Like that's paying way more money than a normal bog to potentially be stuck with a, a turd that won't go down. <laughs> I think oh, I think I... they have like got around that problem, but with the earlier ones, it was like. Yeah, your shit will just sit there until the power comes back. So I, I I just decided to look. I was curious. Sorry, I'm stuck on how ridiculous a Bugatti is. I had to look yeah. something else up. Apparently, replacing the tires, a set of tires will cost you between thirty and forty two thousand dollars, and the tires need to be replaced every twenty five hundred miles. What? Well, so about every three thousand miles, you're changing your oil and your tires. So you're spending. A what, car, like fifty to sixty thousand dollars every three thousand miles to drive the car. You, so what is you that buy per mile? Another luxury car for that price. Yeah, and also I guess the the miles per gallon probably not great on that. The added probably the cost not. of the fuel. What does it cost per mile to drive that? Let's say I... if it's sixty, just doing the, these maintenance, sixty thousand dollars per three thousand miles. I mean that's what twenty dollars a mile, independent of gas. <laughs> I, I for one, am pro this Bugatti and its system because mm. this is, this. if anything, is, I'm pro anything that soaks at the dumbest rich people for all of their money. <laughs> like, this is, an, this is an absolute scam, and if any rich it's, shithead is falling for it, they, they deserve to be taken coming and going. Right? It's so expensive that if you were to give that car for free, to the majority of people, they couldn't afford it. it. Would cost, they would lose money using it. They'd have to just sell it. It would cost you more money to maintain it than you might make in a year. Uh, That's so it, nuts. It, it gets seven miles to the gallon in the city. <laughs> <laughs> and in, ch in chat over here, I'm looking at chat. Sombris says at top speed. Uh, this Bugatti, the Veyron, will run out of tires in 15 minutes, but it runs out of gas in 10. <laughs> It's just like the <laughs> upper echelon of cr of uh, madness when when money just means nothing. Peter H does bring up a great point in chat. It's not a car for driving. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah, it's a car to be buried in because that would be your two. <laughs> if I got that car, now you better believe that would be my fucking coffin because <laughs> Jesus Christ for yeah, that amount you're, of money. You're you're definitely living in it, right? It's like <laughs> yeah. This is that's more than my like this being in this car costs more than being in my house. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, and obviously that car probably I assume costs way more than my house. How much does that car cost? I would I would uh, love to know which owner of a Bugatti Veyron has the least amount of money. <laughs> like, is there someone who just saved up? I, what was it cost? Like a million? Couple of million? I'm million? trying to find it. Uh, who's the, who's did the did anyone just save to the point where it's like, I can now afford this. This is all I can afford. <laughs> and they bought it. Or do you need to have like 10 or 50 times the value in cash to buy that? Like, <laughs> who is the poorest person with a Bugatti Veyron? So, the Veyron cost $2 million. <laughs> right? The, okay, so someone is like, someone's like, I'm going to earn like $3 million and I'm going to pay like a shitload of tax. I'm going to spend the rest on a Veyron. I guess you could write it off if it was for... Who's the person who had if you to were living in stretch? It. They had to stretch to get the Veyron. <laughs> they had to like... Well, I, I would love to know. Didn't... I would love to know who that is. And like, they must be oh. a super enthusiast. Like, it, make, <laughs> it makes them so happy. And they worked towards it for so long. They were like, yes. But it's like, <laughs> it's a money pit, man. Just, I don't know. You don't have to spare million just to keep it around. <laughs> just the farm fresh idiot who, who uh, had to skip and save just to inform his 
<laughs> car that is just an anchor around their neck. <laughs> just... They're just doing like Uber Eats. Just yeah. um... this... I I got I picked up for, for this curse. Your this pizza's is... gonna be hot as hell. <laughs> I hope curse. you leave a thousand dollar tip for it. I got picked up in an Uber one time. It was a truck, really nice truck, massive truck. But on like uh uh what are those giant monster tires yeah, that they monster. you had yeah. to have a they put down a ladder so that I could get into this Uber. <laughs> like I couldn't like so I had to like climb up this Uber. I mean I, I when it showed up and I was like going from the bar I'm like <sighs> it's towering above all the other cars and I'm I'm just talking with the dude in it. <sighs> and I was like so this is quite the car the truck He's like, yeah, yeah, it's been everything I had on it. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, these tires alone, they each cost like ten grand, or something Whoa. like that. Or I, I don't, I'm, I'm, it may not be, it's not exact, but it was like, I was like, in my head, I was like, what? He's like, I was like, what kind of mileage do you get on this? He's like, oh, we're not the best, you know, like around ten. And I was like, oh, okay. And then in my head, I was like, how is he making money doing Uber? Like, if he's if and he oh and he said he had to like change every he had to change the tires more than normal because they were giant tires that like would die. It just made no sense to me. And and I was like, well, thanks for the ride. I'm like climb down your ladder now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet these people are actually very smart though because selling a Veyron probably is worth more than when you bought it. I mean, if they don't uh, make them anymore, let me see if I can find one on eBay. <laughs> on eBay, is that where you find? That's where you sell a bear. <laughs> oh, look, Buga. The auction has ended. Bugatti. God damn it! I, I oh, yeah, one. I can, I can buy, I can buy a Bugatti here on eBay. How much? How buy much? it now. Buy it now. There's a 2011 Bugatti Veyron for 1.7 million dollars. See, that's a good return. That's like that guy's probably had it for five years and he's lost maybe three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> on it. But that's it. <laughs> Well, that's not counting oh, the, yeah. the tires wife, and the oil changes. The tires, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wife, children who refuse to be seen with him. He's lost them, too. Someone in chat calling me out because my dream car is an Aston Martin. An Aston Martin is a lot cheaper than a Bugatti Veyron. You can get Aston Martin for like 50 grand secondhand. You, get, you, you, can get him, you, you get an Aston Martin for the price of Bugatti tires. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, get, you can get like a, an old one. You, yeah, you wait, probably wait. couldn't get a 177, but who's buying those? What's the like, what's like, the what's the Aston Martin one seven seven? Yeah, I think it's a car that they made only seventy seven of, uh, and you can't get them, and it's obscenely expensive. But it looks really cool. Just so I, you know, oh I yeah, I'm there looking at it now. On eBay. I'm looking. Okay, yeah, probably not. I assume all the people who got one of those seventy seven cars, uh, they they're probably pretty fond of them. <laughs> Man, uh, you know. I'm sorry, I'm looking at an Aston Martin 177. That That's one of those, that is a car that most closely resemble, I, I bet that's one of those cars that most closely resembles the concept art for the car. Like someone yeah. drew it and it's like, oh, by the time it makes it in production, it'll look different, of course. But no, that's like, that one went from concept art to car. Like they, <laughs> they just, nothing changed. They just uploaded the concept art to the the printer and it just, yep. the 3D printer the printed car that car. car printer. <laughs> Built it, yeah. There's a 2020 Aston Martin for two hundred thousand dollars in Dallas. We could all split it. <clears throat> yeah, what? Yeah, let's we split let's it four do it. Ways? I would honestly, I would never buy. Well, I don't drive, so it's pointless me even saying it. I just, <laughs> I would never want to have a nice car because you oh, leave it in the outside, <laughs> right? And it just gets like rinsed by the elements, and people can drive into it if they're not paying attention. Yeah, I, that's it's scary. What... I, I, don't I don't have a want nice my car. most prized thing to be, you know, in constant situations where the outcome of it is completely out of my hands. Yeah, I didn't tell the story. You're lying. My... You don't know if people are opening their doors and hitting it. Shopping carts are rolling into it. <clears throat> yeah. Rocks are hitting it on the road when you're driving. <laughs> I mean, so my nightmare. car. My car got melted. I told you all that story. <laughs> oh right, right. You did tell yeah. that story. Where you got? I was parked next to a building that caught on fire, and it just <laughs> melted my car. But then I kept driving it because it was like, well, I can still drive it. It's just melted. 
But if it was an Aston Martin, you'd probably be more sad about it. Yeah, probably, but I I wouldn't park next to a burning building. I guess it wasn't burning it wasn't, when I parked there. It wasn't burning when you parked, yeah. I wouldn't have parked it on... I, if I had an Aston Martin, I wouldn't be parking in, 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 in near college campuses. Probably true. That, like, also, I, I feel like with... Um... If if you were if you were in the position to afford a fucking Bugatti Veyron, and if you had enough money to one afford that car, two to drive it and maintain it, you're so rich you have nowhere to go. You 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 have so <laughs> little in common with you the have... common man. It's not like you're driving it to the fucking Publix or driving it to fucking like H E B to like get get curbside in it. Like where where are you going in that thing? You, yeah, you would have people for everything. The only time you would get to drive your Bugatti Veyron is to like stuff that only you can go to, like your annual <laughs> prostate exam or like yeah. shit that sucks that you can't send a minion yeah. to or, like, yeah. or unless you would just be like i'm gonna go and buy milk today i'm gonna go and buy my own milk in my <laughs> own two million <laughs> do you think that if you were like had a date you'd be like well is this date good enough like am i emo am, do i want to impress this girl enough to risk driving this two million dollar car the, the thing is about like nice cars is that it only impresses someone in like the first impression that doesn't hold through the remainder of the relationship you can't be like yeah. a, a sh like a shitty lousy bloke but then be like hey but check out the car i got in the game it's pretty <laughs> nice right you want to stay huh <laughs> also yeah, like by the way would nice you mind cars... filling up my uh oil for me <laughs> <laughs> i think also like a lot of nice cars are like you know, super exotic cars. People, a lot of people don't know about them, right? Like, I, I think if most people saw a Bugatti driving down the road, they'd look and be like, "Oh, that's weird. I've never seen that kind of car before." That doesn't click with them that that's a fucking two million dollar mansion driving down the road next to them. Yeah, or like a Koenigsegg or something. Right. So yeah, yeah that's some whatever. crazy shit out there. <laughs> like so you. You know, for like that amount of money, like for for something like a a two million dollar vehicle, like get get me a a, a Mars rover, like get me yeah. something that's like <laughs> something where the wheels would fall off if you went over a roundabout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's like something that's like so ridiculous, like so expensive, but like so ridiculous. I feel like you know you see those like two million like those Bugatti Veyrons these incredibly like ultra uh, uh, fancy hypercars or whatever. It's just like oh, it's like all the trappings of like a normal car usually. Just like it's still got a steering wheel, it's still got like a shifter and like a really comfortable seat. Hopefully, God, hopefully. <laughs> but then like it's all like the little refinements of like oh, it can you know it's like super super fast and like oh by the way like the door handles are made of leather for from a, a, a species of. <laughs> Cow that went extinct like 400 years ago and it's, it's like actually just the tails of the cows <laughs> to yeah. pull the door open. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> how much is a roller coaster yeah could you buy a roller coaster for the price of no a god damn it i bet you could how much does a roller they gotta coaster be like cost they gotta be eight figures because the how average cool roller coaster costs from one to two million dollars minimum but some of the newest attractions in the world cost around twenty million dollars. Okay, yeah. I feel you like all the ones that you'd be excited about are uh, like upwards of like eight million. Yeah, but okay, pick the one place you go to the most. Say it's to your to work, not now, but like in the pre-COVID times, right? You, if you had a, a roller coaster to the office, how cool would that be to go like wake up and go da da da? I'm getting to work, and you get on a roller coaster. <laughs> You still have to wait in line. It's like I got a, <laughs> I got a fast pass. I get to work, I get to work quicker. I well, really be able to see where you yeah. lived. <laughs> well, no, because it it might be it had multiple stops. Okay, we're watching a uh, Bugatti Veyron by the looks of it. Uh, go, nailing it down this road. Probably like twenty percent of this. Oh, I just went into a lake. Oh, oh God. it was not going fast. It was going. What was he doing? Did he have a stroke? I think he was just wasn't paying attention, wasn't looking at the road. Maybe the GPS said, said turn right. <laughs> yeah, By I don't way, think he I was going <laughs> super fast. He's probably going, what, 30, 40 miles an hour? I love and it. yeah, he's just not paying attention, just drives right <laughs> into a lake. 
<laughs> By the way, uh, I, I love just a minute ago what what Chris was describing is a subway. <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's describing just, just like hey, a vehicle. I, I got an rail. idea. It's like it's like a roller coaster that takes you to work. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a train? You mean you're talking about the subway? Well, yeah, that's a train. <laughs> it, I I think it'd be cool if it was yeah like a subway underground, but just like a one man pod that shoots through a pipe. <laughs> That'd be sweet. That, that would be wicked. Oh yeah! You just like, emerge from like, the sewers, like Futurama. Yeah. Oh sure. man, the best. Uh, yeah. Be what is the yeah. fastest method of travel, aside from supersonic flying? Like, what's the uh, fastest land travel? Gavin, like, can you get like a? Yeah. It's your imagination. <laughs> it's That's brain. it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the podcast is over. <laughs> but can you go? Is there a jet? powered vacuum tube transit system like a like a oh. bank like a the bank like the pneumatic, pneumatic system yeah 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 like a pneumatic a check carrying pipe but for people really far underground don't think that exists well let's get working on it i will I wasn't there wasn't wasn't uh, uh old uh uh, EM trying to work on one of those on like a hyperloop, like a super fast, like basically so, magnet train that like goes, like yeah, breaks supposedly. the sound barrier or some shit. I've, but you're still like, dealing with with wind with air resistance. I think it was in a vacuum tube though. Oh, was it shit? <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, yeah it's, a that sealed, was, that... it's a sealed tube with low pre low air pressure. Yes, yeah, sounds... so there was no wind resistance in it, but like well, such such like outside of. Uh, this, that would work in space. It's such a complete logistical nightmare to have a completely airtight, sealed tube miles and miles and miles long. Like, that's so, just um, unbelievably imagine ridiculous. Imagine what happened if you vomited in it. You'd just be stuck. Well, you wouldn't be little... able to be in the vacuum. Oh, you mean, like, in the pod? In the pod. You're in the pod and you vomit, and then you're stuck rolling around in it for, like, an hour while you go to China. <laughs> so it says here... So like, China? <laughs> Apparently, uh, Virgin's working on it. They have a website at virginhyperloop.com. They say that they're working <laughs> on it and that they want it. They, apparently, they think it's going to be able to go 670 miles an hour. That's still slower than sound, though, isn't it? Through air? What's the speed of sound in air? It's, it's getting close. I think it depends on your altitude, right? Speed yeah. of sound at sea level. Speed of sound is about 761 miles an hour. Damn. So you're getting close. You're getting yeah, pretty close. close. You're, you're like at, you know, you're at like a commercial jet sort of speed. Yeah. We had, there were those planes that we talked about on Black Box Down, the, um, the, the ones with the, the, the stinky nose. <laughs> the droop snoot. The droop snoot. Yeah. That, they, those the would break the sound. Yeah. The Concorde, those would break the sound barrier. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the point of them. But, but, but. But Concord like went out of business, right? Like no one was interested in because it was so prohibitively expensive. Right? It was expensive, that, yeah. It was like it was like oh, like a a a first class flight was like fifteen grand or something like that, or like a normal flight was fifteen grand. Yeah, well, I want to say it was like it was it was way more expensive than a normal plane ticket. But yeah. I think the tires did last more than a Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, they, I don't think they did. They actually replaced oh, okay. the tires a lot. <laughs> we, we covered that minutes. on the podcast, but we did uh, cover that in our episode. Uh, <laughs> well, how much they, is the newer the newer Bugatti, like the Chiron? Chiron? Was it was it called something? Ron? Chiron? Ronald? The Bugatti Ronald? <laughs> Bugatti okay. Priceless. The, the Bugatti Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh, wow. Okay, weird. <laughs> bold, bold choice, I guess. I'm trying to find their price list. Oh, let me go to carandriver.com. Hey, guys, they gave the Bugatti Chiron a 10 out of 10, just FYI. <laughs> wow, that's oh. the best car, huh? Apparently. <laughs> it's a $3 million for that one. Oh. Yeah. What happens if you accidentally, like, you bid on a car on, like, eBay for $2 million or whatever, and then you don't want it? You probably go very quickly to the bid retraction form. <laughs> you can do that. And, and, and be like, oops. I, I think you click on the button uh, called Psych on the website, <laughs> and uh, they they go, ha, 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 boys will be boys. Chiron? People know. are trying they, to phonetically the most, type it. The most expensive Bugatti is $19 million, though. 
Wow, what is that one? I can't pronounce that. Try. La Voiture Noire. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll paste it into uh, Discord. You can see. There was also that, that Rolls Royce that someone just commissioned Rolls Royce to make them. And they made nah. like a custom one. I think it was worth like 20 million or something. That, you think that guy? Like, whoa. Yeah, that but thing looks look cool. Yeah, that it is that cool. that is a goddamn Batmobile. Like, make no mistake. That's that is that's it. You found it. Nineteen million dollars. Yes. Oh, let, let me see here. Let me see if I can find a nineteen million dollar house in Austin. Let me look up what a nineteen million dollar house here uh, <laughs> looks like. I bet it's like downtown on the lake. That one looks like the Batmobile. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Austin, you know, the very specific part of the podcast where we talk about the real estate market in the city we live in. <laughs> Price minimum, uh, 10 million, no maximum. Uh, there are no $19 million houses. There's a $15.8 million house listed, but there are no okay. $19 million houses in Austin currently. So you have nothing the of value to park that in front of. No. <laughs> the, are uh, there this... more than $19 million houses? No, the most expensive one I can see in Austin is fifteen point eight million dollars. That's it. Oh, wow. That's it. This, the, well, the Bugatti, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at wait, the, I'm looking at the technical specs here on the uh, Bugatti La uh, uh, Vitour Noir. The uh, owner's manual is printed on the back of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I mean, that is incredible. That's really amazing. So the uh, I, I take it back. The fifteen point eight million dollar uh, property is just land. There's no house on it. So the most expensive house. It's 13 million. You just have to I make sure have... the house you build is worth more than your car to make yes. sure you can park yeah. it. Someone uh, at in chat is saying all Rolls Royces are custom. I don't mean like a special order. I mean, they like des they designed a new car, like a custom. I don't know what it's called. It was like it, they didn't have any of these and then they made one and that was it. Did I explain that? Yeah, I get you. Yeah, they're like, hey, I want a <laughs> I car you. that's like this. It's like, all right, well, tell us more. I know you don't just like walk into a Rolls dealership and be like, that one. Oh. Oh, by the way, Peter H. in chat just said that Cristiano Ronaldo bought the only one of those Bugattis that was ever made. Oh, good they only him. made one. Yeah, they made one. I, I mean, if you sell it for nineteen million dollars, <laughs> do you really need to make more? Well, it's I don't know. Cool. It's, it's crazy that you could buy something of that value because you kick shit real good. <laughs> <laughs> Not like a surgeon with the utmost dexterity. I guess you know, really good at football is. A different type of dexterity. It's true. Makes people makes people happy. Yeah. Uh, There's one the love. Wait, you, we already said the love of short noir, right? Yes, that's the nineteen okay. million dollar one. <clears throat> that one does Eric, look like tail. In chat here, Eric says that we've been talking about finding Forrester and Bugattis on this podcast. So you know, this is a podcast for nobody. Yeah, you know what we didn't <laughs> talk about that. We didn't talk about that shitty pandemic. We That's just, right. We just ignored it this week. What? Which is, which is good. I, I, I texted Gavin the other day. I'm getting really desperate for life experiences. I'm getting desperate for anything <laughs> to be able to talk about on the podcast. So I'm thinking of signing up to do like one of those food delivery apps to be a delivery driver <laughs> just to get out of the house and be able to like, I don't know, do something. <laughs> like, and, and I said night, that we, we like, could potentially learn stuff like if you if you do like a food delivery app we could we could really find out how much your driver is eating your food based on how much food you eat that you delivered like a have like a control yeah we can, we yeah. can uh, go up based off of that yeah to deliver 100 meals and then let us know how many <laughs> of them that you ate some of I, yeah, honey, uh, the the guy who just delivered our our Taco Bell uh, party pack I was driving a Tesla <laughs> that's, that's, that's a first, right? That seems okay. I think I, I think I listened to a podcast about plane crashes. That he <laughs> I feel like I feel like do you do you do you walk your dogs and like go out much? Well, I just walk. Just take them to my backyard. Like my dogs hate being outside. They oh. want to be outside as little as possible. So but they only dogs. want to go to the backyard and then immediately run. They hate it. They hate I, it. I feel like I keep having little weird animal adventures. Like I, 
I, I, there was like a, um, I was driving the other day and then I stopped because I thought I saw a rabbit animal because there's this animal just going in circles like this, just circles and circles and circles. <laughs> so you so thought you'd get close to it? No, no, I stopped because I was like going that direction and I stop and get out. And then I, I, I'm like looking, I'm like, is it rabbit? What is it? And then another car comes from the other direction. And then they drive, they stop and look. And then as they come by, I'm like, I wave them down. I'm like, what is that? Is it like, and they're like, they didn't, uh, I don't think English was their first language. So we were just like trying to, I thought he was the first telling me to put on a mask. Uh, and, and so, which, which I did cause I had it in my car. Uh, and then, and then I was like, but then it turned out he was saying it had a, it had a can on its head oh. and it was a raccoon that mm. had a can on its head. So then I drove, I went to my house and got a broom in a box and we spent like two hours ca uh, getting this can off this raccoon. And then, it, <laughs> because it, you know, like it would, we would trap it in the box, but then it would escape while we were trying to get the can off and then it would <laughs> run away, but it, it had a can on its head. So it could, it, it was just it was wearing a helmet. Yeah. Well, it would just run into stuff because it couldn't see anything. So it was like a, t but then we'd get it back in the box and then we were trying to get off. But then it was this It was like a back and forth for like two hours before Chris, we finally I, got I, the camera. I really, I really hope, I really hope like you got at least like three wishes at the end of the story. There's like a very, <laughs> no, no, he didn't. And, and then like he just ran off the raccoon. Oh, he didn't, he didn't uh, we, thank yeah, you. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it felt, it felt like, Unappreciative because we were, we spent like two hours trying to get this raccoon's two panel. hours. Just yeah, get a magnet. I don't. What magnet do I have? I'm like, oh, let me just run and get my high powered magnet, magnet because <laughs> magnet. because I do because I happen to do like I don't know super slow motion videos all the time. I'm not you, Gavin. <laughs> I, I like Eric just posted a message that wrote, that just says, "Is my grandpa telling me a story right now?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, if, if any if anyone at Rooster Teeth had access to Wiley e. Coyote's Acme catalog, I feel like it would be you, Chris. Like if you were just like <laughs> had a giant magnet in order to uh, God, you know. with, yeah, we're just I feel very different people. I would so I'd just be terrified to get anywhere near like a. It, well, looking. I was at first. In, in chat, because... I want to point something out. In chat, I don't know how to say this. Mass Skull King <clears throat> is asking, why was this story not on his list? Yeah. Oh, it was. <laughs> oh, it was? Oh, okay. <laughs> it was on my list, but it, it, I, I, for, I have a long list, and it was at the bottom. Raccoon cup save. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what but, on uh, earth? <laughs> but it was like, I, I also realized that I think I'm like, I have a gift at saving animals with things stuck on their head because this is not the first time that I've done that. Cause we also, I also did it to a penguin like in 2016 when I was in Australia, that's it's an RT life, okay. but I pull a, a, penguin. a, a penguin. A penguin and I was like, this is now, this is now not a, this is not a coincidence. This is a habit at this what point. What was on his head? It was a, a can of soup. <laughs> Like he, he got hungry, went looking for some soup, got stuck, and then, you know, walked in circles. <laughs> went looking for some soup. But I was scared because I was like, it is a wild animal. So I was like, trying to. You don't know. You might actually be rabid. Yeah. Well, who knows? So I was like, I was like gearing up. I was wearing gloves. I like and stuff. the gearing the intention up. was soup. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cute little dude. I feel bad for him. Both the penguin and the, and, the, and the raccoon. Woke up in the morning, cracked its fins or its wings or whatever it has. <laughs> Who's to say? Science doesn't even know. And was like, today, soup. <clears throat> That's what I'm getting. <laughs> I don't know what soup oh. is yet, but I'm going to find it and I'm going to eat it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's about time to wrap up. We got to we gotta get out of here so that uh, the next program can kick off. Uh, but I do want to say thank you to everyone for watching. Thanks for taking part in chat and uh, hearing about finding Forrester and Bugattis and Raccoon Cup Saves, which might be the weirdest podcast we've had in a long time. Thanks and, for arguing. Uh, yeah, thanks for arguing with us, and uh, we'll see you guys again <laughs> next time. Bye. <laughs>